right now we are in live right so this is our class for today's class we are going to discuss about the rocks and minerals and students in minerals there is a separate part called secondary clay minerals today i am not going to deal about the secondary clay minerals students because secondary clay minerals is very important for our agriculture purpose so you will have a separate lecture for secondary clay minerals okay after completing all these things we will go for uh, for the details uh, after completing this lecture we will go for the secondary secondary clay minerals in a separate lecture we have a very very interesting uh, lectures i'll take on the secondary clay minerals anyhow coming to today's class is rock you know in very starting of a class i ask uh, whenever i talk about rock if i say rock I mean suddenly what you will get many people said it is a solid crust or something which is very hard mass is composed of minerals yeah you are right naturally if you if you want to quote a definition it will be like this rocks are hard mass of mineral matter so composition of mineral right comprising of one or more rock forming minerals and moreover these rocks are came from where came from magma magma and in petrology if you are interested you can go you can study the petrology especially especially jrf to srf students definitely whenever you go to your uh, phd courses there please read this book petrology there are many many books are there on petrology in internet you can go through it okay after complete after when you get an admission in ph okay this is the study of rocks is called petrology you know actually in greek it is derived from a greek word petro means rock logos means science it's a rock science petrology so petrology deals with as i said it's a description of rocks petrogenesis and it is a study of rocks there are many 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 technologies is there students if you read the petrology petrogenesis petro and uh, petrology and uh, there are few few to three technologies are there in petrology those are all those are all different and now coming to the next slide students as i said there are three types of rocks is there, rocks is there students what are those very first one igneous rock or primary rocks so cooling and consolidation of molten magma you know what is magma this magma the magma that lava you say na that magma so cooling and consolidating of molten magma within or on the surface is called primary rocks you will see in detail about what what are those primary rocks at the same time sedimentary rocks or secondary rocks what is sedimentary what is sedimentation what is the meaning of sedimentation sir our students you be you please be quiet yeah they only our your junior should answer what is sedimentary sir uh, settle settle down matlab uh, i mean uh, any sediment should settle down ah, theek hai theek hai okay okay uh, you are srf student <laughs> you know all these things come on jrf students you should answer your seniors are answering one they, they may come with up to i think hardly they may come to three four classes rest all they have separate classes okay anyhow that is called sedim sediment remains it's a sedimentation forming layers let's it's called sediment some transportation material if uh, by the power, by transportation of few materials some rocks will be formed and that agent may be any agent there may be water there may be wind there may be any kind of any kind of agent it is called the sedimentary or secondary rock and another one called is the called stream. what is that alteration you know some alterations will take place in primary and secondary rocks and those alterations may be due to the pressure or due to the heat or due to the climate conditions all those things will happen and some alteration in the primary and sedimentary rocks will completely leads to the formation of a metamorphic rock just as shown here see the igneous rocks may be formed in in between you, can, you see you can see this uh, you know you can see in this picture there will be igneous rocks sometimes igneous rocks in the it will be in inside of the earth or in crust or sometimes on the surface so this igneous rocks will again what will happen it will it will move to the erosion part due to our erosion means due to some natural elements like water rain etc so it will go and it will be leads to the form some sediment it forms some sediment sediment will settle down it will settle down in some area and leads to the formation of sedimentary rocks and due to this some pressure changes or due to the some heat or intensity in some 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 natural changes what will happen these sedimentary rocks will again convert it into metamorphic rock you will see all the you, we will go further very details regarding with these three matters igneous sedimentary or metamorphic or you can give the igneous generally we mostly we use igneous word than primary rocks 
So for your understanding, ignition is primary, primary, and for transport, the second one is called sedimentary or secondary rock, and next one is a metamorphic rock. Please note down, students. Please note down these words. These wordings are very important. Okay, and coming to the next slide, students. Rocks. Now we can see what are the different kind of rocks. What is there, and we will see all those things. Okay. Now we will see very first. Very first one is called igneous rock, students. Please, please note down in your lecture in a note, and igneous. And second one, and second one is called sedimentary, and third one is called metamorphic. And what kind of rocks are there, sir? There are these are the three major kinds. But in these three major kind also, we have different kind of materials. What are those? Very first one. Intrusive, intrusive. What is meaning of intrusive? Inside, it will be these rocks are formed inside the earth mass. You know, inside the earth mass, we can see. I mean, inside the earth layers or inside the crust, we can see formation of those rocks are called intrusive rocks. And next one is called extrusive. Extrusive means outside. You can see this outside. We can get some outside the rocks are formed. And uh, example for intrusive rock is called gabbro. An example for extrusive is called basalt. Even if for interest, we can take granite also as one example. Anyway, these are the examples, students. And these examples are very important, students. Please make a note, as many of examples you know. And if you learn with formula means, very nice, very good. Especially as a student, you should learn formula also. And intrusive means gabbro, extrusive means basalt. And coming to the sedimentary, what is the condition of sedimentary? Yeah, granite is left out here. Granite is another example. And rayolite is another example of extrusion. Now we come to the sedimentary conditions. What are those sedimentary sedimentary rocks? Clastic. Students, does you heard the word this word called clastic? Does you heard? You, anybody can answer. Does it, does you heard this this word called cast clastic? Sedimentary? No sir. No. Yes, you can answer. What is clastic? Please please answer. What is clastic? Is it audible? Please, please answer. What is clastic? Anybody can answer. No problem. No idea. Please, students, you should interact. Almost all are all are completed BSc students. What is clastic? Very sad. Very sad. No one is answering. Okay, I think I hope you don't know what is clastic. Pre-existing rocks. Uh, okay, plastic means pre existing rocks. Do you have any idea? Does you, does you read anywhere about this plastic? Oh, no, sir. no, sir. Okay, fine. Very good. If you don't know, means no. That, that's a good thing. If you don't know, means you said, I don't know, sir. You'll accept it. Okay. Anyhow, sedimentary means plastic. Plastic, there is one part. What is plastic? We will see next slide, students. And another one is called students. Another one is called chemical, sorry, chemical sedimentation. So you, you know what is the chemical, some sedimentation of chemicals rocks. So we, now we will see some examples students about the chemical and plastic. In plastic, you can see sandstone. Does you see sandstone? Sandstone strengths? And actually, you should, you should see in your, in your college laboratory. Definitely, if you touch that stone, means some sandy particles will be ruptured from that. It will easily weather the sandstone. Example for plastic rock is sandstone. And another one is limestone for chemical it is limestone these are the two best examples for your understanding of plastic and chemical now we will see the condition of metamorphic rock what is a metamorphic rock yeah some more examples i'm giving more examples shale also is another example for plastic and coming to the metamorphic foliated you know foliated some layers layers will form foliated foliates just like your onion layers it will be there some foliated metamorphic rock and another one is called non-foliated. There will be no more no more foliated foliations. This is called the non-foliated. Now we will see the example of a foliation. Example slate. Slate is a foliation. Slate, you know, slate means generally in olden days house they they use for flooring purpose. This for nowadays no one is using very olden days during 90s and 80s they use this slate for flooring purpose. And another one is non-foliated is quartzite. Very hard material. It's very difficult to weather. Anyway, quartzite. Is another one. So these are the different examples, and this is the complete complete information with examples. So please, I hope you have noted out this all these things in your in your notebook. Okay, definitely, students, we will give note, but but we will we will guide you, but we will we won't make you lazy and lethargic. That is our policy. Anyway, 
more, some more examples like cyst is another example of foliation and marble is another example very interesting students you will see some beautiful images regarding these rocks so overall these are the important things and regarding regarding the rocks and classification so we will see now we will see different different classifications of rocks or how the rocks are classified based on the silica nature based on the origin we will see all those things very first we will see what is next slide plastic rocks this is what i i was interesting students you know some pieces what are the whatever the rocks are was what are the when when the, when a particular rock was weathered some pieces those pieces are called plastic or pre existed those pieces what will happen loosened by the weathering and transported and trapped in a depression depression means students what will what will happen means wait this is a so what will happen this is a one rock on big some big rock this rock is weathered so what happened this rock is began into small 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 pieces similar to like this you see like this okay this will be what will happen this will be transported by some agents any agent water rocks or this so what will happen while transporting there will be some depressions this material will be deposited here this small small piece this small clusters Fast will be deposited. So what will happen? These pieces are buried deeply and compacted in a dual core sort of compacted. What will happen? Some other, some other fine materials will be deposited here. Small, small materials. What will happen? Formations, formations, and later what will happen? It will become very strong, and that rock is called sedimentary rock. Those are there are many examples like your red sandstone, brassica, and shale is best example. Grey sandstone is example, and conglomerate is example. And those sediments are they vary from students. If your if your grain size is two millimeters, see here I'm explaining. If your if your grain size is two meter two me two millimeters is called pebbles. Please note that these are the points you have to note down. So if your if your grain size is more than two two millimeters, it is called pebbles. Shale is a rocky and mostly clay. Shale is a rock made up of mostly shale. Shale is mostly made up of this is an example. Shale is made mostly of clay. Siltstone is made up of silty sized grey. So shale is made shale is made up of clay. Siltstone is made up of uh, silt sized grains. And sandstone is made up of sand cells, clays. Sand cell clays means some sand particles combinations. That's why students, whenever if you, if you really if you see sandstone in your laboratory, when, when you try to rub on that sandstone, you can see small small grains will be loosed out. It's easily weather weatherable and matter. So that is this is the reason. And conglomerate is a made up of pebbles. So these pebbles are made up surround the matrix of sand and stone. So these sand and stone or sand or mud will be cemented these pebbles and leads to the formation of Conglomerate. That's why you can see the same as C students. You can easily identify the things. What is that? But better, better you can see this image. See, all small, small particles are completely cemented with some other secondary particles. So this leads to the formation of clastic sedimentary rock. This is a, this is the reason. What is a clastic sedimentary rock, students? Okay, students. So. This is regarding with the clastic sedimentary rocks. I hope you get some interesting about you know you, you came to know what is the clastic sedimentary rocks for us. And best example of clastic sedimentary rocks, these are the clastic sedimentary rocks. Please note down, students. Please please note down all these these examples are very important for examination. Work. They will ask the examples. What is what are those? What are the examples for the clastic? Or sometimes they may give combination. They will give some other rocks. And please identify which one is a say a clastic sedimentary rock. Then you should answer without any fear. You should answer. About these things, okay, students. This is regarding the plastic sedimentary rocks. Thank you. And next, students, we will see now. We will see our original concept called why I given plastics or rocks. And very first means most of them I don't know what is plastic. Now we will see the igneous rocks, primary or massive rocks. You know, uh, actually these rocks are formed due to the consolidation of magma. Magma means lava. Magma on the surface. Extrusive outside. Naturally, these are the whenever whenever the lava was erupted from the uh, from from the from the from the volcano. What will happen? Some part of lava will be solidified on the surface or or external surface of the crust. So those kind of rocks are called extrusive rocks. For your understanding, extrusive out. Just you make make some call some idea. Extrusive means out out rocks. Just you can. You can you can keep a some yardstick understanding like that. Okay, extrusive rocks. What is an example for extrusive rocks? Basalt. So basalt is your best example for the extrusive rocks. I hope you get the example of 
basalt and you know what is an extrusive rock or volcanic rocks. And now we will see next one. It is called the intrusive rock, intrusive inside. What will happen? Those magma was completely solidified in between the, in the in, inside the crust of rock, inside the inside the earth surface means what will happen? That those rocks are called intrusive rock or plutonic rocks. There is another word called plutonic rocks. And plutonic rock means actually, if you go with plutonic means rocks which are formed at the greater depth. If you see very deep, the deep solidification in the deep layer, some sort of magma was solidified means those rocks are called plutonic rocks. Here, here, this is what I want. This is what has explained here. See, this is what I'm explaining here. Sorry, same color. Yeah. Now you can see plutonic. These are at a greater depth was happened. So this is called the plutonic rock, okay? And hyperbasal rocks. Hyperbasal rocks means at shallow depth. If the rocks were solidified at such shallow depth, that is called the hyperbasal rocks. So these are the rocks. And what are the examples for these, sir? You can see granite. Granite is the best example. It's acidic rock and serenite and diorite and gabbro. So these are the examples for your intrusive or yeah mostly intrusive rock inside the rocks so this is called the molten magma uh, the, the magma which was solidified inside the inside inside the earth surface is called the is called the intrusive rocks okay so this is a regarding explanation these are the examples please note down these examples are very important for the examination purpose now we will see next one vesicular rocks naturally you may have you may not heard about this one also Anyhow, but we today we are going to learn molten magma cools on the surface, and stream of water was entrapped. Entrapped. That means some some uh, some water molecules of water was entrapped into the rocks and formed some small vesicles. So small some water trapping will be happen. So those rocks are called vesicular rocks. You just see that mostly some where whatever the rocks found in, especially you can see in where the seashore areas you can see this type of rocks, especially vesicular rocks and trapping. And coming to the rocks. Are classified. There are many classifications are there, students. So very first we have seen based on their origin. Rock the rocks are formed on the surface, are called extrusive. Inside is the intrusive. We have given different examples. And now we will see based on the silica, rocks are classified as. Please please note it down, student. This one also is very important. Very first, what is that? Based on silica, silica content. Based on silica content, now we'll see. If the silica content is more than 65%, silica oxide. So those are called the acid rocks. Example, your granite and rhyolonite. So please note down this. If the, if the silica content is more than 65%, it's called granite and rhyolonite. And next one is called intermediate. Intermediate. If, you, if, you, if, you, if your silica content was intermediate, that means what is those? Those called the intermediate rocks. 56 to 65% of silica oxide. Those are also intermediate rocks. In, if the silica content was 50 to 65 percentage. And now we can see basic rocks. Basic rock means nothing but your 40 to 55 percent. So those are example for those are gabbro and basalt. And naturally, you can see some students. And so these are the important things and important important uh, uh, classification based on the silica content between that. And please remember the content of silica also is very important. You should you should cover and you should be strong in each and every part of the rocks. Then you can answer some questions. So this is regarding with the classification based on the silica content, and these are the some examples. And now we will see. This is over picture of our of our rocks. This table will give us a clear cut message. What are the igneous rocks and what are the conditions? Very first students, you can see granite. If you see the granite, its the origin is plutonic. That means inside the earth surface, very greater depth. Uh, mostly halocrystalline means you will learn this student. This crystalline structure definitely there will be another class. What is this halocrystalline? There is a separate class called crystal crystallography. In crystallography, you will learn body centered, face centered, many things are there. You will learn in next class. So please you note down this terminology itself. Plutonic and halocrystalline. Essential minerals. What is that? What are the minerals? What is the major mineral present in granite? It is nothing but quartz. Or the common mineral example is hornblende and magnetite and mica. Okay, students. I will, I will make a marking here. So these are the hornblende, mica, uh, sorry, hornblende, magnetite, and mica. What is specific gravity? Specific gravity will be around 2.64, and remarks will be around light colored with white or reddish. The color will be some, sometimes will be white, sometimes reddish. And serenite. This is also plutonic, holocrystalline, 
same to this essential minerals are quartz and orthoclase and here also you can see uh, on blend magnetite and biotite and average specific gravity is 2.80 and your remarks it is light in color white or reddish quite similar to this and diorite it is a plutonic halocrystalline same and essential minerals it is nothing but quartzite it is also quartz combination is same what are the major minerals is hornblende magnetite and biotite your average specific gravity is 2.85 it's quite darker very darker gabbro and uh, plutonic holocrystalline almost similar and what are the common essential minerals are labradorite agate and olivine hornblende and Eliminite is a common minerals we can see the specific gravity is three which is more than all combined about all these quite blackish very dark in color and dolerite it is hyperbasal labradorite agatite olivine hornblende and eliminite are the common minerals here these are the essential minerals and very common you can see this uh, we can see this and average specific gravity is three this is also blackish in color whereas basalt it is volcanic crystalline with glassy mass quite different from rest all the essential minerals are labronite agate and olivine please note down this thing these words and hornblende and eliminite the average specific gravity is three there is no more remarks here so these are the origin and conditions of our rocks igneous rocks these are the complete uh, complete information regarding of your igneous rocks so please this this table itself will give a pure understanding about the about your uh, about your igneous rocks i hope you get some information regarding the igneous rocks now we will see in the next slide what is going on and now we can see sedimentary rocks so students if you have any doubts regarding with the igneous rock you can ask me now and then later on we go to the sedimentary rocks no questions if you have any questions you can ask regarding igneous rock i mean yeah in the previous slides no sir no any doubts okay okay thank you students now we will go to the sedimentary rock sedimentary it is nothing but uh, transported materials generally we can say. so natural student these are nothing but some consolidation of sedimentary accumulation through wind water action of surface or action on the surface so we can see some sedimentation will occur some sedimentations will occur there will be some sedimentation means some transportation material with from the uh, from primary and secondary rocks so those those sedimentation they happen with any any purpose they may that may be wind or water action on the surface etc may many of deposit layers are formed the chemical reactions generally the combination of matter if you see those deposit what will happen sometimes those deposit may react and form and uh, due to the combat with water you can see some aqueous solutions and that leads to formation of some rock so sedimentary contains various sizes of mineral strands you can see silica oxides you can see iron oxides or lime so these rocks are called the clastic rocks generally strand that, that's why just uh, this i just repeating this sentence i have just repeating what i explained about the clastic rocks in previous just i repeated here so anyhow students coming to the sedimentary based on the origin the sedimentary rocks are classified as residual and transportator residual means whatever we are leached out material and auto left out material is called especially laterite it comes under sedimentary because the, the residues which is left out the laterization we can see some laterite rocks so they called those those things are called residual rock come to the transported so deposition as solid solids in suspension in suspension water suspension deposits will be in solid so hard solid mass so those are called those those conditions of example are called examples for those things are called sandstone and sedimentary and depo here depositions will be mainly taken in so in solid phase only some solid depositions will be taken place suspension deposition of solid suspension in water so mostly we can see sandstone and shale we can see like that and deposited by the chemical precipitation some chemical precipitation some reaction some layers especially we can see limestone and iron especially students uh, i think in rajasthan i think there is a heavy availability of gypsum very cheap source of gypsum that is that that is nothing but due to this chemical precipitation and deposits are deposited through the agency of organic matter peat and phosphatic deposits mostly for organic some undecomposed peat and muck soils muck soils very marshy moorlands so those in there we can see some some sort of depositions and formation of some 
sedimentary rocks. So those are called the, those depositions for organic materials, for example, peat and peat soils and muck soils are phosphatic depositions. So these are some depositions, are these, some depositions. Now we will see in detail about sedimentary rocks in the next slide. So based on the grain size, so even grain size, the size of grain size also, there is some classification. Please note on all this classification, students. Please listen, students. Okay, rocks with boulder, big size, boulder, pedal, pebble size minerals means radiations. That means the, the, this if the explanation for radiation is this one. Okay, example for those is called conglomerate. If sometime you can you can compare with that. Just I just now just now I've shown the image of conglomerate also. And rock size with sand size particle. That is nothing but areneous. So the example for that is called nothing but sandstone. Sandstone is the best example for that. And Rocks with silt size particles, silty size particles, is nothing but siltstone. And rock with clay size particles, the depositions, if, and this is the sedimentation, depositions will happen in this much size. Clay size particle means silt. If the silt size particle means siltstone, if the sand size particle is it's called sandstone. And please remember these words, students, rhodaceous, amnesious, silt rocks, argillaceous. And there is a famous endopedon is there, argillic. You will learn very interesting topic in taxonomy. You will learn all those things. Example for that conglomerate, sandstone, silt, and shear. So these are the these are the examples. They're based on the grain size. This is the classification of sedimentary rocks. Now, okay, this I think you have get some idea regarding what is the classification based on the grain size. Story. This is the important. Now we will see in next. What is that? What is that? And sandstone. Mostly students, this is a this is a quite example. I'm giving some brief briefly. I'm giving. What is the mineral composition? You can see quartz with some calcium carbonates and iron oxides and clay. These are the mineral composition of sandstone. Please note down, students. Please, please note down all these all these points. And the color is light to red granular. Okay, shell. It is a clay mineral, quartz and some. There will be a combination of some organic matter also. And color is around light to dark, tinny, and laminated. Some you can say some laminated type is there. And limestone, limestone mainly calcite with some dolomite, iron oxides, clay, phosphate, organic matter. And color is around light gray to yellow fine grain to compact so this is the combination this is the mineral combinations and these are the color structures please remember this dear player please remember these concepts very important for the sedimented of sandstone shear and limestone okay students now we will see in the next slide metamorphic you know metamorphosis many times in biology generally we are all from basic science students so we know what is that okay this is change due to some heat pressure or influence of heat pressure or some chemical activities. What will happen? Our sedimentary rocks or igneous rocks, which, which we have discussed in the previous slides, they may change or they may go some changes and leads to the formation of our famous metamorphic rock. Okay, students. So if those metamorphosis happen due to the water means, water means hydrometamorphosis, and if it is if it has happened, if the pressure means, you know, that is called the dynamo metamorphosis. So you can see, students, this is nothing but it is altering the chemical composition of a primary and secondary mineral. That means igneous and sedimentary rocks. You can see those changes of those rocks will lead to the formation of our metamorphic rocks. So now I'm going to give you one example. If this is the granite, so how the granite is changed due to the metamorphosis? Change that gis. See, nis, not gis, nis. Generally, it is, it is pronounced as nis. G is silent. Okay. Granite was formed as nis. Now, it is this is basalt. And this basalt, due to the changes, due to some change in heat and pressure, what will happen? It will change into cyst. Cyst. Okay. The shale, basalt and shale was completely changed into cyst. See, you can see some similarities then and there. Some changes, some metamorphosis is there, some metamorphic rocks. These changes of heat and pressure. So these are the maybe change into just okay. These are the these are the examples for metamorphic rock. If it is water conditions are provided, the water was influenced in that metamorphosis called the hydrometamorphosis. The pressure was there. It's a dynamo metamorphosis. This is regarding the metamorphotic rocks. We will see in detail about all these things. Now, sandstone students. Sandstone will turn into any idea, students? Quartzite. 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 
Okay, majority have given answer. Now we'll see whether it will be to the standard. Yes, quad Z sandstone turned into quad Z. So shell was turned into slate. See, students, actually, uh, we, you know, some we as a childhood during our childhood period, we practice our alphabets on this type of material only. Our slates usually broken now while we are playing with this. And generally, this is what happened. Very famous in my district. This was very highly available. The slate was highly available. The shale was completely turned into slate. Sandstone was turned into quartzite. So this is the thing we happen. And still, still there is there. Still there is there. Limestone was turned into marble. So how this marble looks? See, quite similar. You saw what? Very brighter than this, somewhat white than this. Okay. This regarding the limestone was turned into marble. This is a metamorphosis. Some changes was happened because of the pressure. Some some pre-existing rocks of limestone. Limestone is nothing but sedimentary rock. Those sedimentaries was thrown into the marble as a metamorphic rock. Now we will see next. This is overall picture students regarding metamorphic stone. This is the I'm giving again. I'm giving some table format of explanation. So this, this or this or this, this was formed from where? Formed from granite. How it is happening? Alter, altering the light and dark color banded in foliated manner. So you can see some color changes, some structural changes will be happen due to the pressure and all those conditions. Formed from this, this was formed from granite. Cyst is formed from basalt or shell. As original rock foliated. Naturally, the rock will be rock will be so the composition will be same, or some foliations will be there. What's that formed from this sandstone? It will be light or brown, as shown in the image, how it looks, compact and uniform structure and foliated in structure. It will be some layers will be there. And slate, slate formed from shell, gray, black, compacted, uniform texture and foliated structure. Foliate is nothing but layers, layer, layer, it will be just like our onion layers or cabbage layers, it will be some layers. So marble from limestone, please, students, definitely they may ask from where the gist was formed, from where from the gist was formed from metamorphic, Rock from from which rock just was formed. You should answer grenade like they may ask. So please note down all these things. Okay. And except coming to the come color and structure, it will be light in color, marble and gray, green, black, compact, fine core structures. You can see some foliated structures will be there. So this is regarding the metamorphic rock, and these are the example of combinations of metamorphic rock. Now we will see next slide. What is the conditions? Brief description about the rocks and mineral compositions. Now we will see students in sedimentary rocks. We will see one by one, one by one. We will see how this uh, matter sedimentary rocks are formed. Very first point, you see students. Farmer through agency are called are called as aqueous rocks. Aqueous rocks. If the rock if the sediments was formed by the water means, those are called the aqueous rocks. The sediment may contain various types of sub substance. Maybe then there is a general sedimentation happens, but not in a single way. It comes on many many sizes of particles will come. And in third point, the particles are cemented by silica, iron oxides, and lime. Generally, you can see some silica will be there, some iron oxide will be there, some lime will be there, gives a consolidated form, give you some consolidated form structure will be formed. And coming to the here, the rocks are mostly deposited in layers of strata. This called uh, in layers means some layers like these drills. That's why I put my image here. It formed like this, some stratified, some layer layers will happen means those are called the stratified rocks. The layer layer strata is called stratified rocks. And next one, sometimes they're formed by cooling evaporation, that chemical pressure, anyhow, they're all of the secondary origin. So if sometimes, some, sometimes the sediment may form by the evaporation or cooling or some chemical reaction, chemical precipitation. So all those origins are called, are, are comes under the secondary origin only. So these are the things. So coming to the sedimentary rocks, what are those? Arneaceous, just now explained. Argillaceous, calcareous, and carbonaceous. So these are the things which I have want to explain. So these are the different different things. And another one is called silicaceous rocks. So these are the different forms of sedimentary rocks: arneaceous, argillaceous, cal calcareous, and carbonaceous rocks, and silicaceous rocks. Please note on all this terminology, students. You may you may get an exam. Now we will see what is arneaceous rocks. Arneaceous sediment rocks divided into six groups. In that very six group, we will we will discuss about this arneaceous rock. What are this? What happened? Form a deposition of coarse grain particle. This arneaceous. It is formed by the coarse grain. You, you just note on this point. Formed by formed coarse grain particles that leads to the formation of 
anaceous rocks and another one is called composed of siliceous material derived from the disintegrator of old older rocks generally if the older rocks were disintegrated we can get some siliceous material so the fragment material derived deposit in the beds and very thick and very at the thickness to the agency of water. Generally, all this deposition, this erinaceous will happen. It is a deposition of uh, this very thickness of deposition will happen because of this agent called water. Water is a major agent. The depositions will be taken place. And another one, depending upon the nature of the cementing material presence, erinaceous rocks are hard, refractory, somewhat loose, but most of them are loose and fall away very easily. Generally, sort of the sedimentary rocks. And that's why if you, if you anybody have experienced a slate, Slate though, this is very quite common in the in olden days. Generally, the flooring they use this slate, uh, though the, that will be easily breakable. Even if you, you can break with, uh, if you have, if you are very strong, you can break with your fist on punch. You can you can break that, break that slate very easily. We can we can easily break down with our elbow. We can break down if you are, if he is a very martial art practitioner. That much very easily you can very easily fall away material is arnishes. An example for these arnishes rocks are sandstone, grit, conglomerate, and Brassica. Please note down, students. These are these are the important things regarding anisius sedimentary rocks. Okay, students. Please note down the examples. And argillaceous. Now we will now we'll discuss about these two: argillaceous rocks and calcareous rocks. What argillaceous rocks are? Say? Consisting of small-sized particles as clay. They composed of hydra silica of alumina. Admixture of there will be some mixture of sandstone, various other silicates, silicates and calcareous minerals will be there. Argillaceous rocks. In argillaceous rocks. And another point is called when clay is deposited, mainly silica or aluminum is known as calnet or china clay. Very familiar with this. If we if it is, if it is compacted with silica or aluminum, generally known as kaolin or called china clay. This is like regarding with the argillaceous rocks. Argillaceous rocks. Example: clay, mudstone, shale, or fuller set. Fuller set, nothing but china clay. So all these things, students. So this is an example regarding argillaceous. And coming to the calcareous. Consisting of carbonate, generally calcareous. Regarding even even the word itself, I've given the idea what what kind of rock it is. Consisting of carbonate of lime, li, lime or some magnesia. And they may they may they may have sedimentary origin and found by the chemical precipitation or by or by some organic agents. Yeah, some organic any agent, some 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 living organisms. They may they may deposition depositions may happen. This 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 is completely. A chemical due to the chemical precipitation only you can see these calcareous rocks. When they are organic agents, they compose a mess of debris. If it if it is in case, if it is if it is in case uh, taken place by the organic agents, means you can see some debris of plants, animals, etc. And they formed either by growth or decay. Generally, you can see when this came, so what will happen? That the, these rocks may form by decaying of some organisms by, by transportation, subsequent reactions will be taken place. So these rocks are found are found in layers which are consisting of deep thickness. You can see some deep thickness will be the uh, rocks are found found in much layers. You can have the thickness will be very deep and very high. And we can found some chemical precipitation. The calcareous may deposit in the layer sheets. You can see some sheet sheet layers. You can see especially I think I think if uh, while I'm giving some theoretical explanation, really it will be irritates you. But if really if you see these calcareous rocks. In this uh, this calcium rocks definitely you can feel all these characteristics. As you can see, layer layer will be there very easily. You can you, if you just your rub means we can easily it will this those calcareous material will stick onto your fingers. If you rub means that is the greatness of this calcareous rocks. We will see next what will happen. Continuation of that. What is that? We can see the precipitation was very very fresh. I mean first precipitation, first layer of precipitation will be very softy, very very softy. Just as I said, it will touch into our hands. But what will happen when this was completely this this uh, these layers was increased or hard and compacted or crystalline structure will improve? What will happen? Then the structure will be very hard and compact structure, very strongly it will be adhere. So what are they? So the important of calcare in act, uh, aqueous origins are what are those? Limestone, chalk, magnesia, pernicious limestone, dolomite, marks of various varieties of coral reefs. You can see the corals all these things you can see. And uh, that, that is uh, regarding the, the carbonaceous rocks and, the, and, and uh, calcareous rocks. Now we can now we will see the carbonaceous rocks. These are completely they are, they are found by the vegetation where where undergoes some anaerobic re reaction conditions. 
generally when the anaerobic conditions what will happen there will be no air supply so what will happen greater pro greater part of our, our this calcareous rock material will turn into coal generally this type of reactions are helpful in the this type of reaction due to this intense heat only some some pedologist or petrology you can read how the petrol or diesel or crude oil are formed due to the due to the because of this anaerobic conditions only because there is no air nothing but there will be some intense heat will be there due to that what will happen all our organic material or whatever whatever the mineral matter is a complete turn into coal or sometimes it may turn into our crude oil example is peat and lignite and coal so we are we are if you if you touch about those part of those uh, how the liquid how the fuels are formed there's a big big chapter but for our understanding these carbonaceous rocks are completely formed under the vegetation under undergoes very anaerobic conditions only so whatever the plant undergoes a uh, restricted air supply a greater portion of carbonaceous matter retain and slowly they convert into coal example is peat and lignite and coal and anthracite so these are the best examples for your carbonaceous rocks now we will see next what is that silicaceous rocks now we will see the silicaceous how the silicaceous rocks are formed so these are formed from the part of some minute plants and animals like diatomic and radiola radiola etc some soft and fragile crumble powder is it formed so crit and crit a hard compact mass will be formed silicaceous material and precipitated salt general deposition mostly consisting of rock masses by cooling and evaporation of the chemical precipitation you can expect some water charge uh, based on the water charge also if the water condition was acid alkali material and some pressure some acting some pressure on the material we can see some subterranean regions especially in uh, subterranean regions and dissolved materials we can see this precipitation salts you can see nearby the uh, water water conditions only so that's the salt deposition such as composition may vary we can see what are those what are those composition precipitated salts especially you can see oxides oxides we can see hematite Immunite and bauxite, especially these precipitated salts. These minerals are very highly available in uh, more in uh, forest area only. And quartz also very very valuable min 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 mineral. We can we can expect. And and another example is carbonates. These are one of the precipitated salts. These precipitated salts are uh, especially we can see these are magnetite limestone, stalactites, uh, and stalagmite. Both pronunciation will be very very close to both these two minerals. And and the one is called sulfates especially you can see some gypsum and anhydrite these are the precipitated salts of uh, uh, precipitated salts we can sedimentations you can see these are different different sedimented precipitated salts oxides carbonates and sulfates and these are the examples note down these examples students note an example just remember the concept of precipitated salts that's enough now we will go to the next and the phosphates you can see phosphorite and chlorides you can see some rock salt depositions all the salts the salt precipitates everything you can see rock salt chlorides and you can see next minerals so after now we have completed the rock portion now we will see some mineral portion okay after come you own hardly there is another three slides i think so they have mineral is nothing but a regular arrangement these minerals minerals are formed by the our regular structure this is a may this is a very basic fundamental structure silica tetrahedra will play a is a fundamental building block for our minerals so there are many non silicated minerals also is there what are those those are the oxides carbonates and sulfates in minerals also there are different types of minerals are there and the different type of silicate minerals what are those which silicate minerals are nothing but consist of silica oxides these are called ino silicates students you will learn next class what is this ino silicate this is, I will, you, will, you will get brief explanation regarding the structure you just remember the names ino silicates filo silicates these are different form of silicates there are ortho silicates and you can say tecto silicates so these are the different different form of the silicate minerals you can say ino silicates filo silicates ortho silicates and tecto silicates you will get explanation in crystal chemistry you will learn all these things next class you will, you will get all you will get knowledge just note down all this points and if possible just draw some rough figure in your note now you will see generally students this is what this is what the major theme of this class original original composition of rock is is nothing but composition is nothing but those are those are called the primary minerals feldspar and mica mica is used in our face cream students for softening so minerals are are the or original original compound of rock are nothing but are called original composition of rock is called primary minerals and what are the minerals derived from the primary minerals are called secondary minerals naturally clay minerals this you will have a separate class on this secondary clay minerals 
and those minerals are chief constituents of the rock very important kind are called the very important chief constituent the major part is called essential minerals and those minerals which presence or absence may not alter any there will be no problem regarding in the composition of uh, uh, rock means those rocks are called those not rocks i'm sorry is <laughs> a mineral those minerals are called accessory minerals so you remember these words primary minerals secondary minerals essential minerals and accessory minerals so these are this is what the major theme of today's class students so coming to the next these are the this is what the overall table students please remember these are the primary minerals ferromagnesium minerals i have where the iron and magnesium will be there or the iron silicates and or the iron silicates you can expect some olivine pyroxenes amphiboles and pillow silicates you can you can expect something and biotite these are the combination students what are there and in non ferromagnesium you can get tectosilicates i have shown the uh, figures and feldspar anthrite and albright and there is in the ortho clays is there in between there you can in the combination is potassium and aluminum this is the combination in our in anthrite you can see calcium and aluminum so please see this uh, composition students so in olivine you can see around for iron and magnesium pyroxenes you can see calcium sodium iron and magnesium and amphiboles you can see calcium sodium iron magnesium aluminum and hydroxide so these are the combinations so just it will be not interested to read all the all these things in the slide so these are this is the combination this is this is the overall picture of the primary mineral students so primary minerals we can classify as ferromagnesium and non ferromagnesium so this is this is the conditions how we will see the next slide students these are secondary clay minerals generally secondary clay minerals you can get some mineral ore ore and other minerals around sodium calcium magnesium you can see around secondary clay minerals you will get separate class you will learn about two stone one stone all those things in very detailed manner and some other constants you can some magnesium and other minerals so pyroxen amphiboles you will see actually this is this is only introduction student you will get separate class regarding this pyroxen amphiboles generally these amphiboles are in alkali nature only you will get uh, that's what i'm saying yeah these amphiboles are in acidic acidic rocks you can amphiboles are complete acidic rocks this is the condition there will be two chains one is uh, one chain one single chain will be there so this the pyroxen amphibial two group of ferromagnesium ions the structure which consisting of long chain link of silica tetrahedra mostly pyroxenes are single chain you can see some single chain form only two oxenes will be shared whereas amphiboles is amphiboles are double chain you can see some three oxenes sharing will be there three oxenes will be sharing will be there in fact they will it will be double chain and the chain sometimes referred as inosilicates this 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 formation of the chain is called inosilicates so naturally you, you will get uh, what is this pyroxen amphiboles all these things you will learn crystal chemistry in uh, in uh, probably next or after next class we can see and come to the micas is the extent is extensively in the soil primary originator parent rock with a solid soil is derived generally soils are inherited from well or oriented and imperfectly ordered mica you will see all these things and this, this is a sedimentary rock the most well ordered micas or micas are moscovite paragonite biotite pelagopite and trioctahedral generally and imperfectal mica consisting of less potassium Can see there they got their wheels. They you won't get well ordered micas. We cannot begin. Some clay fractions will be there. Am I among the ordered micas or biotite? Whether more rapidly than Moscovite? So then, so there will be different order in ordered micas. Are the very big chapter will be we'll get another another class regarding with this. So imperfectly ordered micas may be of illite type. Because there are well distorted micas of soil that exhibit mixture layers. We can see some mixture layers will be there. Vermiculite, mixite group of minerals will be there. We come to the feldspar. This is non for non-ferrous magnesium feldspars, mostly consisting of aluminium silicates like potassium, sodium, and structure called tetrahedral. Tetra, which is attracted by sharing of oxygens in feldspars, we can expect. And mostly, this tetra consists of silicon substitution. Aluminium, there will be some aluminium substitution will be there. Belong to the mineral of lightweight. There are two groups of feldspar. What are the potassium feldspar? Very famous word. We may have heard about this. And orthoclays and microclays are the mostly plutonic and metamorphic rock. These are the another another kind of feldspars. And plagioclase feldspars, plagioclase feldspars, albite and anthrite are the best example. Albite is high in sodium, anthrite is high in calcium. So quartz in quartz, you can see it is very densely packed. It's very highly resistant stones. Due to this quartz, you highly packed and high purity. This quartz is very difficult to resistant and it uh, very dense, electrically neutral. free from any substitution that's why quartz was very resistant to the weathering conditions that's abundant next to the feldspar we can see serpentine after after quartz we can expect some serpentine anhydrous magnesium silica occurring more commonly in secondary products granites are of metamorphic rocks are very hard and more resistant to the 
uh, more resistance to the weather and granites we can see granites mostly it has some characteristics of a metamorphic rocks because even it, it will because it turned to metamorphic rock and very hard and it will shows much resistance to that's all for today's class students the last two slides these the, you will get this crystal chemistry especially this uh, this philox and these especially this strength parox and amphibials today i have given only just for your understanding i have given this slide but next class you will see regarding what is this parox and what is amphibials all these characteristics students so i think that's all for now i think i took very lengthy lecture today anyhow thank you students if you have any doubts regarding this you can ask and this class you can see again in uh, youtube the link which have we have provided any questions students any questions definitely students they our we are studying soil science so it is somewhat we have to think more if i if i speak about sandstone most of you guys uh, not even see what is a sandstone in your uh, right it's very difficult just imagine how it happened just i shown some images all those things so any questions regarding rocks and minerals any questions students so there is no no answer from no nothing is there any how students thank you i hope you will get some info you have get some information regarding rocks and minerals uh, for the next classes we will go for uh, crystal graphy some crystal graphy is then only you can understand what is this um, ino silicates pillow silicates etc etc you will get some idea regarding with that and coming to the next class we will see about the secondary clay minerals and Hello, after that we will go for regular pedology classes yeah varun any doubt Sir, in rocks, which is more resistant to weathering, sir? Igneous, secondary, metamorphic rocks. Hmm. Generally, each rock is very. Generally, granite is very resistant. Quartz is very resistant. Generally, I think sedimentary is highly weather. Igneous, I think each rock will have. Sir, in our object book, they give sedimentary. I think igneous. Yeah, that's what. See, some objectives are all objectives are not right. Sedimentary is easily weatherable, no problem. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, any questions, students? I hope. I feel last few few five minutes you feel some boredom, but don't worry. As the first time I've given you a lengthy lecture. Anyhow, students, any questions? If you have no doubts, you can leave the channel and leave your precious comment in the chat box regarding this lecture. i will try to improve if i need any corrections in my method of teaching or i should i should slow down my voice something i can can improve that just leave your comment in the chat box and you can leave we can leave the channel in the students